Okay, let's talk about volume. You're going to see it across the top. I've got volume equals cubic feet equals liters equals gallons equals million gallons equals acre feet equals ounces equals teaspoon. Uh, just for clarification, a gallon does not equal a million gallons. I'm just writing this across like this so that you see that there's several different ways to express volume. A cubic foot does not equal a liter, does not equal a gallon. I'm just trying to make a point that you can write volume in so many different ways. So I'm sorry if that's a little confusing. I'm just, you know, we need to talk about what is volume anyway. Uh, the, the definition of the state of matter that is liquid is anything that fills a volume. So what is wastewater? It's 99.9% .9 water. So it fills volumes. That's why we need to know the equations for volume. So let's come down here and start talking about the three most common shapes and what they become. So a circle becomes a cylinder or a tank or a pipe. So the equation for finding the volume in a tank or a pipe or a cylinder is 0.785 diameter squared times height. You can also do pi r squared for the area if you want, but I'm going to teach it as diameter squared because it's my preferred method. Square or a rectangle becomes a cube or a box, and that is length times width times height. And then a trapezoid is base plus top divided by two multiplied by height multiplied by length. These become like grit chambers and oxidation ditches and any kind of flow channel that is wider on the top than it is on the bottom. I don't know of a lot of flow channels that are wider on the bottom than they are on the top. I'm sure they exist. Uh, you know, there's lots of stuff out there. So anyway, uh, a couple constants you should know is one cubic foot equals 7.48 gallons and 1 million gallons, this is going to blow your mind, equals 1 million gallons. So 1 mg stands for million gallons and that's how we write a lot of our numbers, okay? So we're going to, at the very end of this lesson, we're going to convert gallons to million gallons and you're going to see what I'm talking about and this is going to lead us into the extended pounds formula. You need to be able to get gallons to million gallons. This goes all the way up to grade four and five math. You know, you're going to be, it, it's important. I'm not going to belabor the point here, but when you get, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about when you start sitting for those tests. It's, it's very important, especially when you're talking about like uh, sludge withdrawal rates and setting your timers and stuff for your sludge pumps. So uh, that's, that's something you need to know. All right, let's get to the, let's get to the cylinder. You've got 12 foot diameter, we'll call it a pipe, and it's 10 foot long. Or you've got a 12 foot diameter tank and it's 10 feet tall, whatever works. So let's come over here. If you're curious about the 12 foot thing, you're going to need to go back to the area video I put out to find area. So we're going to blow through that part and get down to the cubic feet since I've already done a whole lesson on this. 0.785 times diameter squared, 12 foot times 12 foot times 10 feet. That comes down to 0.785. This becomes 144 square feet. And then 0.785, these two become 1440 cubic feet. Remember, we multiplied another unit by itself, so we're adding a 3 now, cubic feet. 0.785 times 1,440 cubic feet becomes 1,130.4 cubic feet. So that's our actual volume of this cylinder. But I want to solve for gallons. So I'm going to multiply that by 7.48 gallons. I wanted to show you this unit conversion here. And this is how units cancel out. Some people draw ladders and whatnot, and then you divide what's on the bottom and you multiply what's on the top, um, and that looks something like this. And that's going to be actually very helpful for um, um, the next segment. Uh, sorry, not the next one, but the trapezoidal segment where you see where we convert to million gallons. But this is how that looks, okay? So we're going to multiply by 7.48, 7.48 gallons per one cubic foot. They cancel out, and you're left with 8,455 gallons in that cylinder. Okay, that was too fast, too much. Go back. I think you can slow my video down. I am a fast talker, and I apologize for that. Any questions on this, please, please put it in the comments below, and I'll get to you as soon as I can. All right, let's move on to boxes and cubes. Okay, let's talk about the box. Uh, this could be a cube as well. So this will be your rectangular aeration basins. I have one of those here. You'll see a lot of rectangular aeration basins out there. Um, I actually have a rectangular secondary clarifier. It's kind of an odd duck. They're normally circular, but you need to be able to find the volume using basic measurements, right? So here we have a 10 foot by 10 foot by 10 foot cube. I wanted to be easy on this math so we can get through it, but if you want to put a 6 and 8 and a 12 in there, it, work it out. I think it's going to be great to, to get some practice tests, and or not tests, but practice 
questions with different numbers in there. I'm just demonstrating how to do the math. So let's come on over here. 10 foot times 10 foot times 10 foot. Boy, this is going to be easy. 10 foot times 10 foot is 100 square feet times 10 foot is 1,000 cubic feet, and just like we did on the last one. We're going to multiply by 7.48 gallons per one cubic foot, okay? And so that's going to give us 7,480 gallons in this cube. Oh boy, that, I know that was fast. I blew right on through that. So go back if, you, if I lost you. 10 foot times 10 foot times 10 foot. Use your calculator. Just plug that in. Maybe don't even come to this step. I'm just showing you how we get here. 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. Foot times foot times foot is cubic feet. And then and I, I pro, I, I'm telling you, it is that easy. When you get into the advanced level math, if you build on your basics right here and work on it here and get really good at this stuff, the rest of it really does just fall into place. So work on this, throw some other numbers in there, just keep, keep practicing, rewatch this, ask questions in the comments, and let's move on to a trapezoidal flow chamber. Okay, the trapezoidal flow channel. So we're going to do an extra step here. It's going to get a little spicy because we're going to convert to million gallons. Uh, let's look at the same area we used on the surface area portion of this series. Um, and, and if you're curious, I'm, again, I'm going to go fast because we already did cubic, or square feet in the last video. So if you're curious about how this all plays out, please go back and look at that. So we now have a flow channel. And please excuse my kindergarten art. I'm not an artiste. Um, but we've got 25 feet across on the top, 5 feet across on the bottom, 10 foot tall, and 150 feet long. How many gallons, how many million gallons do we have in here? So we're going to go, the equation is bottom plus top divided by 2 as feet times the 10 feet tall times 150 feet length. It's going to look like this. We're going to, this turns into 15 feet. 25 plus 55 is 30 divided by 2 is 15. These have, we haven't done anything with these yet. We move to the next level. 15 times 10 is 150 square feet foot, foot, times foot. 150 square feet times 150 feet comes out to 22,500 cubic feet. Feet squared times feet is cubic feet times 7.48 gallons per cubic foot. And these units cancel. Remember that ladder I described a little earlier? And so 22,500 times 7.48 is 168,300 gallons. Well, that's great, but I was asked for a million gallons. How many million gallons is it? So remember this, 1 mg, uh, markers got a little rough there, 1 mg equals 1 million gallons. So when you're doing the ladder math, if you need units to cancel out, it would look kind of like this because we're dividing. You divide the things on the top. Sorry, you divide, whoo, exact opposite of that. I apologize for the flub. You divide by the things on the bottom. So it's going to be 168,000 gallons divided by 1 million gallons. Gallons cancel out and you're because it's 1 million gallons per 1 million gallons. If you're watching this, if you're listening to this video and not watching it, that is a very strange thing to say. But if you actually look at what I'm pointing at, it makes sense. So 1 mg, I'll say, is equal to 1 million gallons. And that leaves us with 0.168 mg. That would normally be rounded up to a 0.17 or maybe even a 0.2 mg, depending on what you're trying to do. But uh, yeah, so that's that's how you get to million gallons. And I know I went through this video pretty quick, but I'm, I'm trying to show you these basic concepts fairly quickly because we're going to take a lot of time on these more complex math problems. So I want this out there for people who need it, but this is very basic stuff. If you need more help with this, I, I really do suggest going to Khan Academy. It's free. It's open source. You can go take uh, all sorts of math courses. And to get to this point, I'm trying to expose you to building blocks for wastewater treatment math. If this, if you're just a little off on this, uh, go back through it again, ask questions. If you're kind of off on it, you know, ask questions, same thing. If this completely flew over your head and you're really having a hard time getting it, go ahead and send me a message or a comment and I'll see what I can do to help you. But otherwise, go and, and take some math courses. I think it could, it could really do some folks really well to revisit the stuff that we've all forgotten about after we left high school. 
and middle school and all that stuff. So anyway, that's going to wrap up volume. We're going to deep dive next into a more expansive pounds formula. And we're going to start talking about uh, flow rates as well. And we're, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I might do velocity next. Uh, we're getting to a point in the math very soon. This happens very fast in our math where you're going to start being able to tie things together. So cubic feet and velocity will end up becoming flow. And, and so it's like, do I do flow next or, uh, or velocity next? Or do I do pounds next? Um, I'll let the force be my guide on that one. But until next time, please stay tuned and study, study, study. I'll have a math, another math one out for you fairly soon. Take it, take it easy.